Hello students, welcome to the session from Infinity Lane. This is Suresh, Faculty of Chemistry. Today, we are going to discuss about the buffer solution from ionic equilibrium, the 11th standard. And this buffer solution carries one mark from the NEET examination. And what is this buffer solution? Let us just exemplify what is going to happen when uh, pure water is taken. Let us have a pH meter. The pH meter shows for the pure water at 20. 5 degrees centigrade it is going to be 7 and when you take a water plus buffer of course the pH is going to be 7. Now water without a buffer solution when you add a little bit of HCl in that the pH of the water is decreased because acidic pH of the acid decreases this. So let us say it is going to be less than 7 it is going to be 3. If you add a buffer along with this water and you want to add little bit of HCl, the buffer pH it was it was 7 and it is nearly 7 or little bit less than that. So I just want to say a buffer solution is a solution here resisting the change in the pH. We can take another example same water if you add sodium hydroxide the pH is going to be increased. And if you add a buffer to that, the pH is going to be almost resisted. So, a buffer solution is a solution which offer resistance to the pH change on addition of a little bit of an acid to it or base to it. So, such buffer solutions are very important in analytical chemistry and any experimental chemistry. So, during a chemical reaction, as the reactant is converted into the product, due to the formation of a new new product, the solution pH is going to be changed. So, to offer that change, the buffer solutions are being used. So, when you talk about the types of buffers and the requirement of buffers, what is the requirement of a buffer? So, buffer should have a reserve acidity and alkalinity in it. That is what I have, must have an acidic and the reserve acidic nature or reserve basic nature of it. Then only it is going to uh, offer the resistance for any acid is added or any base is added. Of course, a buffer on long standing it is going to resist the pH. A little bit of temperature change is there, it is going to resist the pH and of course, a dilution also it should resist the pH. These are the various important parameters we need to know about the buffers and we can see the acidic and the basic components from the buffer should not react among them. Say an example sodium acetate and uh, acetic acid. It is going to ionize acetic acid ionizes to give us acetate and H plus this is acidic component and this is the basic component and these two do not react. These two do not react. So, that criteria of the buffer conditions are required and also types of buffers. You have various types of buffers like simple buffers or mixed buffers. Simple buffers is nothing but salt of a weak acid and a weak base like a ammonium carbonate kind of things. And we give more emphasis for the neat examination based on this mixed buffers. Mixed buffers are two types acidic buffer and base buffer. And acidic buffer is prepared by mixing a weak acid and its salt of a strong base like acetic acid is mixed with sodium acetate. Also you have a basic buffer, you have a, a mixture of a weak base and its salt of a strong acid. And like an example you can take ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride is an example. So, they have the reserve acidity and the basicity. Based on that, you can say ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. And also, you can say various examples acetic acid and sodium acetate. You need not have to buy out this kind of pH ranges. And benzoic acid and sodium benzoate, talic acid and sodium thalate or potassium thalate. Glycine and amino acid and glycine hydrochloride and we any weak acid and its salt with a strong base and formic acid and sodium format can be taken as example and also you can say ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide or ammonia solution we can say acetic acid and acetate 
बफर यू कैन से एसिटिक एसिड एंड सोडियम एसिटेट और पोटेशियम एसिटेट एच एफ एंड एफ माइनस फ्लोराइड बफर पॉस्पेड बफर साल्ट ऑफ एनी पॉलीप्रोटिक एसिड कैन बी ए बफर माइंडेड एंड ऑल्सो यू कैन से बफर सोल्यूशन यू कैन कैलकुलेट द पी एच ऑफ ए बफर बाई यूजिंग हैंडसन हैसल बैच इक्वेशन पी एच इज इक्वल टू पी के ए प्लस लॉग साल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन बाई एसिड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दिस इज यूज टू कैलकुलेट द पी एच ऑफ ए वीक एसिड एंड द वीक एसिड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड इट इज अ साल्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन के ए इज एसिड डिसोसिएशन कॉन्स्टेंट हैंडरसन एसल बैच इक्वेशन फॉर द बेसिक बफर ऑल्सो कैन बी गिवेन एज पी ओ हैच इज इक्वल टू पी के बी प्लस लॉग साल्ट बाई बेस इन दिस पी के बी इज बेस डिसोसिएशन कॉन्स्टेंट इज नेगेटिव लॉग रम टू द बेस टर्न ऑफ के बी वैल्यू इज टेकन एंड यू कैन से हाउ द पी एच इज गोइंग टू बी चेंज हाउ टू अप्लाई दिस बफर कॉन्सेप्ट इन द नीट एग्जामिनेशन वेर इज अप्लीकेशन आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गिव यू गाइड्स एंड यू कैन सेम एसिटिक एसिड एंड सोडियम एसिटेट इट्स एन एसिटिक बफर and in this acidic buffer let's say concentration of the acetic acid is c1 and the concentration of sodium acetate is c2 and according to handerson hasselbach equation ph is equal to pka plus log c2 by c1 c2 is a salt concentration and c1 is acid concentration from the basic buffer take an example of ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide the concentration of ammonium hydroxide is c1 and ammonium chloride is a c2 in that you can calculate poh is equal to pkb plus log c2 by c1 ph plus poh is equal to 14 so ph can be calculated ph is equal to 14 minus poh and let us let us see the details about this for that acidic buffer from that acidic buffer if you add sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide is going to react with acetic acid and if you just add sodium hydroxide to that acidic buffer let us say c1 concentration oh minus is x mole per liter that is the sodium hydroxide concentration so that let x amount of the acetic acid is consumed so the left amount of the acetic acid is a c1 minus x and sodium acetate that is formed is going c2 plus x because this is a salt now the ph of this salt so buffer solution is going to be ph is equal to pka plus log c2 plus x upon c1 minus x this is the kind of formulas we have to spontaneously derive during examination this is very important for neat and crt based questions also you can say if little bit of hcl is added that little bit of hcl is going to consume the base that is available over here and c1 and c2 c1 plus x and c2 minus x and the ph is equal to pka plus log c2 minus x upon c1 plus x like that you have to derive kind of expressions you don't go for the complicated complicated uh, calculations kind of thing let us talk about the basic buffer so this is the basic buffer mixing of ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride let us say c1 is the ammonium hydroxide concentration c2 is the ammonium chloride concentration and the poh is going to be pkb plus log c2 upon c1 in that let us say little bit of hcl is added what happen ammonium hydroxide is being consumed so x amount of the ammonium hydroxide is consumed why because you are adding x molar hcl to that so that ph is going to be changed like poh is equal to pkb plus log c2 plus x upon c1 minus x so similarly if little bit of sodium hydroxide is added you are going to add the base concentration so that poh is equal to pkb plus log c2 minus x upon c1 plus x from there you can see a uh, buffer range does this buffer works in all the ph ranges no buffer is going to work nicely in a certain ph values that is pka plus or minus 1 that is the range mind it this is your trick and ph is equal to pka plus log salt by acid concentration after adding a buffer solution it is going to be pka plus log c2 minus x 
upon c1 plus x so when you talk about this minimum molar ratio of the salt upon acid is going to be 0.1 and ph is equal to pka minus 1 and the range is going to be ph range is going to be pka plus or minus 1 so mind it this is the trick you can solve certain questions from neat examination and also let's talk about the requirement of a good buffer the ph value nearly should be equal to the pka value of the acid that we are using so resist both oh minus and h plus at equal amount and also pka plus log c2 by c1 if c1 and c2 concentrations are greater than greater than 2 greater than x amount of this acid or a base is added ph is going to be pka plus log c2 by c1 so i just want to say ph is working in this case plus 1 in the previous case minus 1 so that we can say ph of the buffer works in the range of pka plus or minus 1 let's talk about the buffer capacity so buffer should work at the range so after that buffer don't have the capacity so it is defined as the number of moles of acid or a base is added to change the ph by one unit so that is defined as a buffer capacity and also let's look at a couple of questions before we see uh, about the buffers and here the question is asked why does the buffer solution resist any ph change so to resist the ph change it should have in reserve acidic and reserve basic properties in it therefore they give an ionized acid or the base reaction when acid or a base is added so for that reason the buffer is going to resist the ph and also you can see a question what is the ph of a buffer in concentrated ch3coh is 0 0.1 and uh, CH3COO NA is 1.0. You just to see the values. Just to see the values. One is 0 0.1, another one is 1.0. And pKa for this so acetic acid is given 4.76. Simply apply Henderson Hasselbach equation so that you can get the answer like this. You can see concentration of the acid is given 0 0.1, and concentration of the salt is given 1.0 put this values in this Henderson Hasselbach equation that is pH is equal to pKa plus log salt concentration by acid concentration pKa value is 4.76 is given and log that is 1.0 and 0.1 you are going to get log 10 log 10 is going to be 1 therefore pH is equal 4.76 plus 1 so that the pH of that buffer is going to be 5.76. So in the neat examination, what is buffer? Theoretically, you will be having a question based on buffer as well as a numerical type questions. You can expect it like which of the following mixture act as a buffer. You take the buffer mixture and identify whether it has a reserve acidity or not or simply use the trick like a weak acid plus it's a salt with a strong base or a weak base plus it's strong with uh, salt with strong base and also you can say various types of weak acid and weak base salt mixtures and also the buffer range and buffer capacities and the calculation of the buffer ph kind of questions you can expect it today we discussed about the concept of ph buffer and its ph and various examples and uh, hope you like this session and please like and share and subscribe to infinity learn neat channel thank you very much